right let's move on to this one and again I've marked that area there and that little area there um, for highlights but this time we're going to use the red to start with the uh, light cadmium red so just pull off a little bit of your graphite again just around there and there the rest is quite dark so don't worry about that and let's get in a lovely light coating of, of red not really any point in bringing it right round here because it's quite dark Right, that's that. Now I'm going to use a little bit also of the Carmine Lake at this stage um, in here because it's picked up the right one. Yes, picked up the right one. I was worried for a moment. Um, just want to darken it a tiny little bit in this area. And then make sure you've got a super sharp point on it and just give that edge there a little bit and just make sure you soften it inwards of course. leaving a nice sharp edge on that little bit of calyx we can use some more of this later and then we'll just have a little bit of it just under there as well that bottom bit a nice sharp edge right now move back onto the black and then we can come back to that carmine so on this edge here we want just a hint almost not touching the paper it's so gentle and then it gets darker as it comes down here little curve 
just there and then bring that round there and there's just a tiny kind of half moon shape here where there's a shadow um, it's not totally visible so if you can't see it again just don't particularly worry because it is all very dark down here just soften that edge because we're going to carry on with the black anyway but we just wanted to put that in if we can and then this travels just slightly away from the edge as it comes up here it's only a little bit and that is going to come round there and then you'll get another darker edge just up here to that little calyx there and they kind of blend together now I'm going to turn the paper right round for a second because what I want to now do is just get this edge here that comes along there and then that also kind of curves away and comes down to about there Right, so turn it back. Um, so I think this actually, it comes more about there actually. That's better. Take that up a tiny bit. and then just a fairly decent but lightish shade a coating of black just not too heavy Now, where this bit is here, you've got a kind of lozenge shape that comes just there. And then this bit is quite light. So let's put in this bit first. And you've got, got to be careful here. You've kind of got two separate little highlights that we want to try and get in if we can. So this is why going lightly with the black to start with is a good idea. Just 
just a hint just here that's all and then as I said this it kind of goes up here a tiny little bit soft edged just a dusting in there and bring that round right and then we need some black down here but not too much So this little area here, although the highlight is up here, there's another tiny bit. We've got, let's just see if we can get this in. So there's a little arch just there. And then there's another shape that comes this way across both of those. And that comes round and down so that, that there's a shape there that's catching the light. And then we've also got so that little bit there is just a tiny little stripe in the flesh of the tomato skin. We've got another one there and then we've got a couple here. And then one there. And then you've got this one that we've already put in that needs bringing across there a bit like that. And then this bit up here goes like almost a, just a greyish colour.
and then just put a little bit of the black just lightly over there. And I'm just going to put a hint of it just there as well. And then we can move on to the carmine lake. So let's take this again now and just put some more over this area. And then we can put a little bit more pressure on over this area of black. Warm this side up completely now. And there is a hint of it in this, that little kind of lozenge shape just there. And there's a little hint of it also just at the top edge of this highlight. Get that in there like that. And then I think the next thing is to use some of the colourless blender. And then we'll see if we need to add any more of the brighter red. Now I've used a bit of powder blender just to push everything together. Um, I'm going to use a little bit more of the light cadmium red now and put it on this side and in here a little bit just to get it a little bit redder. Doesn't need very much, just literally a hint. And just through there like that and I've also by doing um, the blender just lost a tiny touch of light around here um, it's not easy to pull it back a tiny bit um, but what I am going to use just is a little bit of the black grape in here anyway um, so this will actually add to that shad shadow there that we want.
and I'm just going to add a little bit of it under here as well. And I'm going to take a little bit more of the, no, I don't want that one. I want this one, which is the Carmine Lake. And I'm just going to enhance a few of these little areas as well with the Carmine, because it is quite a ready, ready blacky browny color down here. It's quite a strange color. They are very unusual tomatoes. Just warm that area up again, just a little bit more. Adds lovely depth anyway, so it's quite nice. There we go. And then we want that lovely bluey, um, the blue violet, and we want a little bit of that in here. And before I do anything else, I'm now going to pick a bit of it off, otherwise it will be too strong when I use the blender. So just put it in and take it back off again, basically. There we go. And then um, I think the, the powder blender again, make sure that my cotton bud isn't too heavy with any other colour here. Sometimes I just pick off the tip with my fingernails just to make sure that it's fairly clean. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit fluffy. And then go in there first so that we've got that little bit of bluey. Go around the edges to make sure that they're soft and then just go over those two highlights a little bit so that they're not pure white and then we can use the rest of the area just a little bit more randomly. <sighs> Not going right to the edges and then over the top of that I will use the colour this blender but I don't need to use it at the moment. Um, so I think the next thing is to maybe do that little bit of stalk and calyx um, and then we can move on to this big chap down here. It's basically the same as before with the, um, the calyx um, in as much as we need um, oh, just the very tiniest hint of black just there I mean it really is just very very light and just bring that down there a little way um, not going to put any more on than that to be honest and then take your chromium green opaque and go over the top of that. Bring that down there.
and make sure that you've got a nice point. Put an edge on that calyx just there. And there's a tiny little one just there as well. And then we want dark just there, all the way across the bottom bit and up there to one side and the same here and to there and then we just very lightly fill those in so that you've got the shading on one side finish off this bit of stem too, up there to there. little dark tip <sighs> right I'm going to add tiny tiny touch of walnut brown just on that edge because I want it to show up a little bit more and I'm going to put a little bit in there like that and probably a tiny little bit just there as well. And then just over the top, put a little bit more of your chromium green opaque. Just strengthens the green a little bit there. There we go. Right. So I'm not going to do the main stem, just do that little bit now. And um, as I said, then we'll move down to this one here. Um, and actually I'm terrified, but I might have to bring in another color. So I'm going to have to have a little consult um, with my tomato vine and then decide. Well, it is a shame, but I've had to bring in um, another colour. So I've chosen cinnamon from the Polychromo range um, because of some of the markings on this tomato. So I've tried to pick out my graphite. Um, so let's this this particular um, little area is totally cinnamon. So I'm just going to put it in straight away. It's actually a perfect match, which is a good thing. Just soften that edge a little bit so that we can bring the 
the black and the black grape up to it. And then, although I've done that little blob, in fact, I'm going to put some cinnamon over all of this bottom area here because it's shining through um, from the background. So um, not necessarily just there, but from here and right up to this area here where there is, um, as I said, we've got the highlight, but be careful that your pencil marks aren't there. And just be careful down here that there's a hint of it, but it's also catching the light. So it's just very soft, just on this little area at the bottom here. And now I've got a nice chisel point. I'm just going to turn this round because I'm going to make sure that that lovely little point on the tomato is nicely edged like that. There we go. Now turn it back and in fact just looking at the shading on this tomato the cinnamon is actually quite prominent here so I'm just going to put in another layer straight away because it is quite strong down here and it'll save us doing it later. Although we are going to add a little bit of readiness to this as well. That's better. I'm happier with that. And also, I'm going to add a little bit of the Carmine Lake at this point, just gently. And I'm going to stroke it because I don't want to get too much on. But I just want to just pink up and darken some of the cinnamon in this area. Just 
could just stroke that across the top. Don't make sh pencil lines, just make sure that it's just softly laid over. And we'll put just a little bit of this Carmine Lake around that little highlight just there. Good. Now, the next thing is whether to introduce black or black grape. I think we probably do need just a little bit of both. So let's take the black first. Now I'm going to have to turn the paper again around here because what I want is to get, there's a lozenge shape here which is the shading from this tomato and you will notice that it comes round from that little arch to about there. And then it's dark in here completely. So you've got that lovely shape there of that tomato. Back we come. And then in here we have, there's a little bit of a gap where it's quite light at the very top. And then we've got a shaded part that comes here and across and there. bit lighter at the edge and you've also got a tiny little bit of shading just here from that stalk so we want to get that in as well and then this is going to come down to our lovely little lozenge shape of cinnamon And then, as I said, this it kind of almost meets there very lightly and then it curls around in a, li a little bit of an arch until it gets to that lozenge of highlight.
um, and just bring just a little bit of soft black. We do actually have a nice little blemish just here, so I'm just going to pop that in. Just a tiny little, there we go, put that in there. And this edge needs some black. Tiny little circle of something there, just probably marking on the skin. And then we need a little bit of black on this edge, make sure it's nice and sharp, and we'll just put. that in down to there, very, very lightly up there. Just soften that edge a tiny little bit. And then we've got this darker edge here. Which softens itself out it's actually quite a soft edge on both sides, but we'll do this side first. And then just soften it a little bit on this side. And that will come down to about there. And it actually merges gently into the point. There we go. Right. Now I think we ought to look at putting in oh, just maybe a tiddly little bit of black just around here. Another little stripe just there that we could put in. And I might just add a, a hint of it here because then it will help with the the black grape over the top. Mm, just a little bit here as well, I think. I think that's all we need. So then we can move on to some black grape. With the black grape, 
let's now enhance the the dark areas make sure you get them nice soft edges And um, we'll need a little bit of soft black grape along this edge here, very, very gently. Just stroke the paper so that there's just one little dusting. And then that's all we'll need for there. We need a little bit of it across these lighter areas, but only little bits here and there. Bring this gently up to the edge of that little highlighted area so that it joins the black. Take, take it quite a lot into that side of the cinnamon oval that we've got there.
and then just a light dusting through that little bit of white there and up onto that edge. And then we just want to split this little highlighted area into two. So we've got a little bit there and then this other bit just there. So that one's coloured most of it and this one's a little bit whiter. Right, and now we need some of our Carmine Lake <clears throat> we need more in here now so you can see where the cinnamon just isn't quite dark enough And I'm just going to put a skimming over that one there as well, that little bit of cinnamon there. And I'm also going to put a little bit of that blue into this part. and then take a little bit of it off and then I want a little bit of black grape <coughs> I can get a nice point on it again and I need to turn the paper right round because I need to put in now just a nice edge on this bit here and just gently bring that inward like that and then <clears throat> I think the next thing I'll do is use a little bit of the powder blender and blend that all inward a bit and then we'll see what it looks like and if it needs extra. Start off with the highlight. I'm actually going to change to a paper torsion actually just for this bit I think it might work better it does mean that you can go nearer the edges as well And once you've done that, you can see where you need to enhance the stripy bits. So let's just put in 
with a little bit of black to start with down here and this area here and a little bit in here a little bit more in that area there and just a top up in that little bit there And then just a little bit of the Carmine Lake across the top again on these stripy bits down here. And then I'm going to finish off with a little bit more cinnamon over here. And I'm going to add a little bit more black grape as well over here into this little cinnamon area. There, there, and now I'm going to use the colourless blender. Um, so I shall do that and then we can move on to another tomato. Now before I start on this next one, I've just been reviewing what we've done so far and I hate to confess, but I wasn't happy with the colour that I was using in the highlighted areas and needed to be more blue so I have picked out little bits of what I've done and I've added instead um, sky blue um, number 146 um, it used to be called smalt blue so you might still have it as that but whichever one you've got it's 146 it's the same number and this has seemed to make it look more the way I wanted it to look anyway so now we're moving on to this one and sadly um, I've had to introduce um, another colour because um, these tomatoes really are just the most amazing colours and this one has got a lot of pinkiness to it um, down where these blemishes are so um, I'm going to use clay rose um, from the Prismacolor range and I'm just going to start by putting a little bit of that in this area here we've got a couple of little kind of blemishes um, that just go up here like this so I just want to get a little bit of this in to start with just to remind myself that that does need to be very pinky in here and we've got one or two little extra marks that we can put in as well as we go I've made a point of doing that one there, so we'll um, we'll edge that in a short while, and then we've got some pinkiness up here.
and that comes up and round to a nice little bit at the top of the highlight just up here and there's a little bit of it here but we can add that later round here it's a very strange color um, because it used to be green and it's still got a hint but it's also got some of this pinkiness to it so if I just get some of this in here and then we can put black grape or black over the top and just bring that up to that central part there and just a little bit across here as well just a skimming really of the paper like that right now then let's put in um, with our black. I'm just going to sharpen this because I do need really sharp points to do a couple of little bits. Um, I'm just going to just edge that tiny little mark just there like that. just so that I don't lose it. And then there is a little, uh, let's just see where that is. It's about here. If I haven't got it quite in the right place, it won't matter, but there's another little spot of light just there. I'll put that in. And up here also, I have marked these in. Um, there's a little one just here. And then we've got a little line and then there's a, lot, a little one that's a bit bigger just there. in a little dark area so it helps to put that little dark area in and then we've got just a tiny little line just there where there's a little bit of pinkiness showing through so we can put that in as well got rid of one of those little markings but I might be able to lift that in a moment and so this comes well there's just a, a little arch there and then this is going to come round and over the edge of that tomato there so we can put that in quite heavily with the pe black pencil because it needs to be very dark just there. And then I'm just using the black but much lighter here. Just 
just to get a little bit of dark shading in there. Then we'll have to move over to the black grape. Um, I need to turn the paper round a little bit. There we go. Um, because we need to get um, some dark in here. And this little area in here is very, very dark indeed because there are several fruits all hanging together. So we could just pop that little bit in there and this in here because that will help. And then around here, you can see that there's a tiny mark that I've put in just there because we come away from the fruit. And then there is a mark under here that acts as a shadow. And then you've also got a little tiny gap of that fruit there and something going on behind there. But this bit is still this fruit. So let's get in that little bit of shading there. a little very dark bit just there we'll put in and the rest gets paler and it's a little bit blotchy you won't be able to follow it absolutely correctly so as long as we get in some splodgy bits we'll be absolutely fine I mean you can see up here there's a kind of comes up like that And then there's one that comes there, so like that. And then this will fade out into the black grape when we get round to it. Okay, let's move it back around again so that I can get to this little bit up here now we've got um, a large area of black just here that fades because there's a big area of highlight and this gets paler as it goes towards the edge so let's not go right to the edge because if you look carefully there's just the tiniest line that comes around there and then the very edge is well the more I look at it the more I see grade lavender um, but I I'm so aware of introducing more colors but of course when you've already got all the colors it's easy to just say well that's grade lavender so let's use it because I've got it This needs to come up here a little bit more.
right and then we need a little bit of black can't, oh I need to just make sure I've got a super sharp point and let's just bring this edge now all the way up here very very sharp pointy pencil and then it just fades lightly Just want a little bit in here, just like it forms a bit of an arch where that highlight is. And then from that little marking there, we've got a little line that's coming slightly down here and it it's that little end just there. And then here we've got a little V shape that goes up and into that little area there. And then, as I said, that's got a little shaded part on it and comes down to there. And we've got these little bits in here, so that's fine. Let's just make sure that that edge just gradates in a tiny little bit like that. And bring a little bit of black over to here. and just a little bit of shading on this side as well. There we go. Uh, do I need any more black? Do you know, I think just here, we just need a dusting of black as well before we put on the black grape. just a tiny dusting up here as well that's great good right we can move on to black grape. Right, the black grape is going over all of the black areas not too heavily in some parts 
and we've still got to leave a little bit um, of space for some of these more pinky areas so they're a mixture of the pink and the grape so the, by the pink I mean the uh, clay rose that we've already used so that's coming into there like that that's a nice little touch in there and actually there's another little bit that comes down like that as well little v-shape and then you've got this little area there when you start doing these other little bits that you can see where you still need to put in a bit more of the paler colours but we'll get round to doing that when we finished with this black grape now under here this little area is very pale so just put Give that edge a little bit of the black grape and then just go in gently with this here. As I said, you're not going to be able to follow every tiny marking exact, so we'll just do, do our best. Just put in some little blemished parts and we'll be fine. An awful lot going on actually on this particular tomato. Lots of tiny little areas, one bit's pink, one bit's black, one bit's really dark black grape. need to add that extra little bit in there Bit more pressure in this area just to make it really dark
right so we're nearly there with the black grape we're doing okay doing okay Right, there we go, a little bit down here. Right, so we need to go back to the clay rose now. I'm going to put some more of that in here and then I need to put a little hints of green and also some more um, black grape and maybe even a little bit more black, we'll see. But we do need some more of this to start with and I might need a little bit of the Carmine Lake as well. Right, let's take a little bit of the Carmine Lake. And just add a little bit more warmth up here. Just a, again, a dusting, no more than just a dusting. And then I need a little bit of black in here. This isn't quite dark enough. It's a little bit random, patchy, but it just needs just darkening down a tiny little bit more. You worked out that this little point here which looks like a blemish is in fact one of these little pointy bits that are at the end some of them have little kind of tails and some of them don't now we also need some of the sky blue in here
and there's a hint of it there as well. We need a hint of green just in here. It is just a hint, but it is there. I want to get that in. And although that looks almost weird at the moment, it won't in a minute, take a bit more black grape and just put in, there's a little kind of blemish there. And then we need a little bit coming down that little section there. Just pop that across just gently. Right, and I think the next thing I'm going to do is use a little bit of the powder blender and just push all this together. I'm going to start in the light area. not pressing very hard I just want to push some of the color into the tooth of the paper without going too heavily because I don't want to lose my markings And I think a paper torsion also helps to get, doesn't look very pointed, but uh, I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Right, now that one might need just a little bit of, you know, tweaking, um, but I'm not going to do it at the moment. I want to get these others in around it first, and then I want to see if it's standing out enough or whether it, you know, just needs a tiny bit more um, dark in certain areas. So. I think we'll play with that um, towards the end, but not right now. So the next one I'm going to do now, is, um, well, actually, I'm going to do all three of these little green ones. I'm going to work on these three um, little green ones at the bottom all in one go, as it were. Um, so this one is very green, so we need to just make sure that we haven't got graphite marks showing too much on there and this one at the bottom is also super green so it's quite pale we need to just be careful 
not to show too many marks on that one. This one's quite dark, it doesn't matter. Right, so taking the black, let's give some sharp edges first of all. And then we need we need black on here, but we've got to be careful that it doesn't go too heavily on that edge to about there. And then if we put in just a tiny dusting of black for about three or four millimeters into that. Just come away from that edge a tiny bit. I'm going to put in one or two shadows as well on the surface behind so that will show up. And then there's a little arch, as you can see, about here that we want to just get in with the black but darker. And then it just pops itself out about there. And under here it's dark because it's picking up the shade, shadow from that. So let's get that in. And then we've got that shadow in there, um, so we'll just make sure that that's got a soft edge to it there. Um, let's go over to this one and put in a very dark edge just there. a few little kind of almost stripes just in there and we could put just a little hint of a marking just here but it's very light because it's really more black grape but we just need to enhance it a bit um, and then on this one we've got some dark in here
and under there. And then there's a patch about here. With another tiny bit just there. Again, you won't get it perfect, but if we're close enough, that's absolutely fine. And then we've got a couple of little rounded shapes just like that and then that shadow of dark comes down there and then almost to the edge and it's curving all these shapes are curving inwards all the time showing the shape of the tomato And then we've got a couple of little blemishes just here. Just put those in carefully. And there and about there, I'm guessing. And there's a couple of little spots as well on this one for some reason. And then this is a little bit of bluey purple here as well, or blacky purple really. Right, and then in here we just want a little bit of dark to show the shadow. but the edge is on this top one. So let's get that in. There we go. Right, so it's now over to the Ah, no, I think the next thing is to do the green and we'll put the black grape over the top. So for the first layer of green, we will use May Green. I need to sharpen. And we don't need much of the May Green on here, but we do need a little bit. So that will be dirted with the the black grape So we've got quite a, a circle going on here. And then we've got two more just here and there. Mark those in quickly.
Right, I will do that edge in a moment because that needs to have the paper turned. So we'll just put some May Green on this tomato first. Be careful of those two little calyx. Right, so that's got a light, a light dusting of green on. So now let me just turn the paper so that I can use my nice chisel end of pencil to just give that a super sharp outline. And this one. And come back again. And then I'm going to use some earth green yellowish on this one. Just a little bit darker green because then we're going to put some purple. Black grape, I should say, when I say purple. And let's get some of this on here as well. And then the black grape, we need in here. And then if you go over the, the green, just a tiny little bit, again, just a dusting you will see that it just kind of dirties up that green enough to give us the shade that we want. Mm. 
make sure you go over the black area well with a little bit of extra pressure on your pencil just to make sure that that black is covered. A few little markings there, but nothing we need really worry about. And then this one, the the green has just a hint of the purple and you've got to follow these little markings again just so that we get the curvature showing just to make it look nice and round So around here, we just want, as I said, you know, just a little dusting of um, the black grape in places. And then on this one, 
we certainly want some black grape on this side so just put that edge in very lightly And there are some little stripy bits coming out from under here. Again, they're very light, but just be careful. Get that little bit of shadow in there. There we go. And I think then the best thing to do is to use the powder blender. Um, I did put a tiny little mark in here because I think it's the point of this tomato. It's not very clear whether it is or it isn't. So use a tiny little bit of walnut brown because I'm actually going to put it in. So just a a little tiny bit there and a little tail that we can then almost take back out again just so that it's there like that and then as I said I'm going to use the powder blender and then I can put in those two little calyx